Hello friends, this video on Vector Algebra Part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched Part 1 to Part 5. So, before we understand, move into vectors mode, let's do the addition of vectors and we'll tell you how and why we need addition of vectors. Suppose there's a guy, this guy moves from A to B and then he moves from B to C. So if you see, this guy has moved from this point to this point and from 2 to 3. The total distance he traveled was this plus this. But actually, with respect to point A, he moved only this much distance. Correct? So the displacement of guy is AC only. So we will be interested more in the displacement. So, to find this AC, we will use vectors. So, we have two vectors AB and BC. So, here if you see vector AB plus vector BC will give you vector AC. Correct? That's what is written. AC is equal to vector AB plus BC. And this is known as triangle law of vector addition. You have one vector A1, let's suppose. You have another vector 2. You add these two, you get 3. So 3 is equal to 1 plus 2. Correct. That's what is called addition of vectors. And why it is used? When the person moves from here to here and then here to here, the actual movement he made was from this point to this point. And you want to know how you get this? This is through vector. One more example could be, this is a table. On this table, Let's suppose there is a mouse. Mouse moves in this table from A to B. In the same time, at the same time, somebody dragged this table here. So this table became this table, the dotted table. Now this B is now here, the mouse is here. Correct. The actual movement of mouse was from, not from here to here, from here to here. Why? Because this mouse moved from here to here on its own and this mouse moved from here to here because somebody moved it. So the actual movement of mouse is from here to here. You want to know what is the actual movement of mouse, then what do you have to do? You have to find the movement of mouse on its own and movement of mouse by the external person who has dragged this table, right? And then you add these two. Right, you add this vector and this vector to get this vector. So if you see in this example, you have AB and B dash. I am interested in AB dash. So I'll say AB dash is nothing but AB plus BB dash vectors. So this is one application of vectors in our physics life, I'll say. To be more specific because in terms of physics, we use, we have such kind of scenarios where you know, somebody is moving and somebody else is also moving on that and you have to find the actual movement. So in this case, the mouse mo moved from here to here, the table also moved and you know, I want to find the actual movement of mouse from the bigger frame of reference. So actually we saw the mouse move from here to here. So we want to find how much the mouse moved. We actually can't find this distance, right? This is something. It happened virtually. So we can find this distance from the table. We can find this distance, how table, how much table move. Then we can find this distance. So such kind of scenarios, the scenarios where we actually need vectors where we actually can't find this distance. Here in this case, we can still see how much the boy moved. We can ask him to again run from here to here. But sometimes it's actually difficult. For example, in this case, the table moved, the mouse moved, the mouse can't move from here to here. Because this point is gone from here, the table moved. So, such places we use vectors. And there are two ways for vector addition. The first is head tail matching. For example, I have two vectors this guy and this guy. A and B, I have to find C. What I'll do is, I'll move these vectors parallelly. Please note, I'll move. Parallelly. Why parallelly? Because these are all free vectors. 
And I know that if I move this vector parallelly, making sure that this orientation is not changed and the magnitude is not changed, the vector is still remain the same. So I'll keep the a vector as it is. Let's suppose here, I'll move this guy parallelly in such a way that the tail of this touches the head of this. In this fashion. So this guy is a vector only, my, and this guy becomes. Correct. So to add this, what I'm saying is I am touching the tail of one to the head of one. Please note, it's head tail matching, head tail matching, head of one matching the tail of another. So this guy is now my real vector. So this guy in the dotted one, I'll say, is my vector a plus. So what I have done here, if you see. If you see, take this. This guy is tail only, so this guy will become tail of this final vector. This guy is head, so this guy becomes head of final vector. This guy is head till matching, so let's suppose this guy is gone. To understand this in a better way, you move this in such a way that head of one touches the tail of other. I can also move, keep this b constant, right, and try to move a. So let me put a here. So this guy is the head. So I, I want to move a in such a way that the tail of this guy a touches the head of b. So tail of a should touch b here. Correct. Head and tail is touching. So this point is gone. So now this vector which you get is my final vector a plus b. Now in this case, since this was a tail, this was a head. This become head. This become head. If you see, both are actually same. A B vector. This vector, this vector are same. So you can do any way you want. You can move A or move B. Doesn't matter, right? The only thing that matters is the head of one and the tail of another should match. This guy should match, or the tail of this or the the head of this should match. So. Either you match the squares or you match the circles, and the final one you get is the arrayed vector. There is another way of of vector addition which I don't prefer, but still a little longer one. That's called parallelogram law of vector addition. In this case, what we do is we take move this two sides in such a way that these two represent. The sides of the parallelogram, adjacent side. Please note, we we represent this uh, vector in such a way that these two represent adjacent sides of parallelogram, and then we say the diagonal of the parallelogram is nothing but my the arrayed version. For example, I have two vectors, these and this. I put in such a way that these two are my adjacent sides of a parallelogram. And here, if you see, my tail is touching the tail, right? Here, this tail, tail touching. So once I have this uh, adjacent sides, I draw a parallel vector like this, and parallel vector like this to complete the parallelogram. So once I have the parallelogram complete, I can draw the diagonal, and this is my vector. So in this guy is A, this guy is B. This guy becomes a vector plus. This guy will be a vector only. In this guy will also be. Correct. So if you see this, this is how it is. So I have these vectors, a and b. The the diagonal is my a plus b. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials. Study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.